So probably this is a nicer way so I can also interact with you. Um, the idea is that, that we, have, we have some issues, some questions, uh, some remarks, uh, just, just to continue with the, with the discussion in the morning. But also, uh, it's, it's open question time, so if you have any comments, any, any concerns or any questions to the, to the participants, uh, feel free to, to ask questions. We will have, I think, a microphone. Somebody will, will help with a microphone, yeah? For the audience, if there is a question, yeah? But we will start, and um, I've already introduced Lea to you, and, and she had a very interesting presentation this morning. Um, but the other uh, participants uh, haven't been introduced, so I will kindly ask them to briefly introduce themselves and uh, the organizations they are representing. So maybe we can start from over there. Okay, my name is Damian Franetic. Please um, press the button. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> my name is Damian Franetic. I'm working from uh, Airport Ljubljana. Uh, and uh, the Airport uh, Ljubljana is the operator of Ljubljana, the airport Ljubljana is the operator of Ljubljana Airport, so um, it's a joint song company listed also on the Ljubljana Stock Exchange. 65% of shares are uh, state-owned, that means directly to the state or parastatals funds. So the, the, the core business of Ljubljana Airport is, uh, of course, ground handling and uh, airport management, ground handling of aircraft, cargo and passengers. We are the sole provider for the time being of ground handling at the Ljubljana airport. In addition, this core business is uh, enhanced by various, let's say, commercial activities like car parking and leasing of uh, premises, warehouses, uh, offices and uh, retail premises. So uh, the main advantage of Ljubljana airport is its position. It is located right in the center of Slovenia it's a 30 minutes drive uh, to Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia. Um, its catchment area includes, besides Slovenia, of course, also parts of Italy, parts of Austria, and parts of Croatia. In addition, uh, Ljubljana airport is uh, situated right on the junction of the fifth and tenth European transport corridors which is especially important for the, for the cargo business. Plus, uh, it's in the vicinity of Port of Koper and other uh, seaports from uh, Northern Adriatic. Um, its position makes it the natural, from the passenger point of view, natural uh, gateway to the southeastern Europe, especially Western Balkans. In addition to core business, to its core business, Ljubljana Airport launched two, let's say, supplemental projects. The first project is the Aeropolis Ljubljana, which is our brand name for uh, airport city. So the, we see the idea of the airport city uh, based on the premise that uh, the core business should enable the development of additional non-aviation activities. And on the other hand, this additional, or this additional non-aviation activities should support the core business. So it's a reciprocal effect. The airport uh, city of Ljubljana should include a uh, hotel with a congress center, business center, business park, shopping malls and logistics centers on the area of uh, 80 hectares. Its final stage should be finished or completed by the end of 2021. The second supplemental project is a so-called multimodal logistics center. I already mentioned that Ljubljana Airport is uh, situated or located right at the junction of fifth and tenth European corridors and in the vicinity of the seaports. This, uh, the business uh, model of multimodal logistics centers is based on two logistics and uh, business concepts. The first concept is multimodality. Multimodality means that you are combining all modes of uh, transport, rail, road, sea and air at the same place. And the second concept is so-called hub and spoke system. Uh, that, to explain in easy words, means that 
uh, the goods from all directions are brought to the Ljubljana airport where they are transshipped and uh, sent or transported to the, to the final destinations. Uh, the biggest investment for time being is of course uh, passenger terminal, the new passenger terminal uh, with the estimated value of 70 million. Uh, the construction should start in the second uh, quarter of this year with uh, expect expected entrance uh, into activity in the second uh, quarter of 2015. That's in short. Thank you. It's an ambitious project, so I think we will have a lot of interesting things to talk about. Now we have uh, two guests from Budapest Airport. Would you please introduce yourselves? Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Gabor Sarvas. I'm representing uh, Budapest Airport, the operating company of Budapest Liszt Ferenc International Airport. Um, I'm heading the directorate responsible for uh, community affairs, environmental health and safety aspects of the airport uh, management. The airport operating company is um, um, uh, a privately held uh, company which is basically responsible for the operation of the and management of the airport infrastructure. There are many other companies operating at the airport, uh, airlines, ground handlers, also the um, uh, air navigation services are provided by um, uh, different parties. We as the, the, the main uh, uh, operator of the infrastructure uh, having um, uh, to work in partnership with these companies. Um, um, you all from Hungary are probably familiar with the airport and the uh, region. Um, our work um, 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 in my uh, special uh, area involves a lot of cooperation uh, with uh, many of you. So um, uh, for that, uh, I don't need to introduce uh, too much, but we will have the chance of uh, talking about some details later. Yeah, my name is René Dröse. I'm from Budapest Airport as well. Um, I'm the property director of Budapest Airport and I joined Budapest Airport in um, 2007. So I'm here now in Hungary for five years, more than five years already. And um, I'm delegated by um, the main shareholder of Budapest Airport. The main shareholder of Budapest Airport is Hochtief, Hochtief Airport, based in Germany. Hochtief Airport has in total, so besides Budapest, five additional airports in his portfolio. Um, so in Germany, Düsseldorf Airport and Hamburg Airport, in Greece, Athens Airport, Albania, Tirana Airport, and we have a share of 10% in Sydney Airport. Um, in all these airport, uh, at all these airports, we have always the, um, the concept or the idea and the intention to develop an airport city concept. So therefore, I was, I was involved in all these airports uh, always on, on development and implementing such concepts. And I'm happy to, to share all the experience from, from these airports also later in this discussion here. Hello, uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Piotr Brzeski. I am the uh, local uh, office uh, director of our Mazovian uh, uh, office for regional planning. So um, we uh, we are lo located in Płock. So like Tomasz uh, said in uh, his presentation, we are uh, the, on the west uh, part of Mazovian region and the, our airport, which uh, we take into consideration, is uh, Modlin, which is located, we can say, in the halfway from Warsaw to, uh, to Płock. Mm. And I'm the project manager, so uh, generally I, uh, I'm the person who, lead, uh, who will lead this RDCP group, so I will talk personally with all uh, stakeholders, try to convince them to, to participate in our project. And uh, of course, uh, for this uh, early stage, because uh, I can say that we are like a child, because we have to learn walking, speaking, because we operate only half an hour, so uh, we decide to, on this first stage, we will focus on the uh, cooperation with decision makers, so with municipality and the airport itself, so this is the core of our group, and then we will uh, discuss about problem and uh, 
in, uh, put another uh, partner stakeholders who, who will be involving in some problem which will uh, arise during our cooperation. So in general. Basically, we, we have heard uh, five different presentations uh, during the morning, and uh, which was quite interesting to me is that uh, uh, if you read the literature, you see a lot of positive things, but if you read the news, uh, you hear uh, much less positive things. Uh, is this airport city, in your view, uh, a technical thing, uh, a marketing thing, or this is really an economic engine? How do you view it, and, and especially when times are uh, not so positive in terms of, we, we, we see that the, the growth of the economy is, is not so prevalent. How, how do cities, city markets relate to airport and airport vicinity markets, and what is the aspect in your models? Are you working with your own property only, or you are working in a context? How, how is it? Maybe I'd like Ljubljana. I believe that it is an economic engine, but uh, the problem is that if you put at least Ljubljana Airport City in the context of the harsh austerity measures in the Slovenia, in the context of declining traffic, and in the context of the ailing dominant carrier at our airport, I'm asking myself how to proceed or just wait that the crisis passed on and something happens positively or find a way to do even in these circumstances. No? That, that's my question. But uh, okay, we structure the airport city as an investment, uh, let's say, uh, chance for the possible investors. We provide land, we own the land, we provide land uh, preferably in the way of uh, long-term leasing, and then we expect that the potential investor will act as uh, real estate developers. So that, that finance, build, and market the premises to the end users. Né? So, and in this situation, it's hard to get them, even to look at this, it's a factor of, of country and of the, of, the, of the airport. Both are small. Né? So imagine, in this situation, it's very hard to get, I mean, serious investor to come and do something. That's the problem of, uh, from the point of view of small country and small airport. Budapest, I understand, is, is also in, in not an easy position uh, these days. Uh, you, you hear about the taxation issues of, of you know, the, the new tax regime, and, uh, and also that uh, we see that, that Hungary, although there is, there is an aspect of, of re-industrialization of, of this country, so we see a lot of foreign uh, investment. It's, it's, it's also stunning that, uh, whereas in the news we see that uh, the general statistical figures don't show very positive growth, but still, um, I did a small research uh, just a few weeks ago, and I could list at least 30 major investments which happened in the past two years in Hungary, and mainly in the manufacturing. So companies who already established a base in Hungary, and that, that shows that if there is production growing, or at least sustaining, that would need some logistics support. How do you view this trend, and, and what is the role of Budapest Airport in, in, these, in, in its own development measures? So hopefully you have, you have counted also our investment. Yes. <laughs> so because Budapest Airport, we have invested in the last five years uh, more than 260 million euros already in this country here. Um, um, I think the, the concept or the idea of an airport city is you cannot simply make a copy-paste. Uh, it must be always um, a tailor-made concept for each and every individual airport. It's, it's a mixture of several factors you need to, you need to count or you need, you need to consider. Um, on one hand, you have, let's say, the hard factors like, like the existing infrastructure. So uh, the airport itself, the existing runways, terminal, um, terminals, cargo facilities, what you right now mention, um, maybe existing office and hotel facilities, etc. You need to factor in also the connection to the airport, so the infrastructure, which is um, for, for us the most important thing. So the road connection towards the airport, coming from the city or from the countryside, is um, very much depending on, on uh, or depends on, on later on the success of, of um, getting companies convinced moving to the airport and, and build up their, their business at the airport. In terms of logistics, you're right. 
Um, we do see Budapest as a, a potential location for um, logistics and air cargo in the center between Asia and Western Europe, because in Central Eastern Europe there's simply no cargo hub, for example, um, who can serve cargo carriers coming from, from Asia. So therefore, this is clearly also our aim to, to promote Budapest Airport as, 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 as such a location. But then the other thing comes, um, and this is, let's say, the soft factor. This is the, let's say, business environment in Hungary. And this is, let's say, how can you promote and how can you marketing and advertise Hungary or Budapest as a potential location. Um, and all the circumstances in the last two, three years in this country and all the negative news are not really helpful. Mm. So therefore, it's very important to have something you can really predict on. Um, and, and, and you can really present to potential investors or clients with the intention to move, uh, to, to establish business at Budapest Airport or in Hungary or in Budapest. Um, so therefore, in terms of logistics, yes, we feel there's a certain demand, but here we need to break up also uh, the, let's say, old historical, um, let's say, relationships and, and um, contracts and, and uh, behaviors. For example, um, right now, uh, to, let's say to give you an example about cargo, right now we have many, many Hungarian cargo traffic or cargo volume flying from Asia or coming from Asia flies directly to Vienna or to Amsterdam or to Frankfurt. And then in Vienna, Amsterdam and Frankfurt, the, the freight, the volume of the, of the cargo volume um, goes on the truck and then it will be trucked from Vienna, for example, or from Amsterdam back to Budapest. This is Nobody understands this. Um, but the, the main problem is there's simply um, not sufficient export volume coming from Hungary. Because carriers are mainly very interested to land within cargo aircraft in Budapest because there's volume enough, let's say, to deload in Hungary, but there's not enough export to bring the freight back, or the, let's say, to load the aircraft with, let's say, 100 tons. Uh, and then flying back to Asia. And it's on cargo as a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you need to restart, uh, you, need to, you need to convince not only the, um, let's say, the cargo carriers, but you need to convince also the forwarders, you need to convince the industry to break up these old rules and the old path and the old relationships and to think about, okay, why not using Budapest as a location to start cargo and not Vienna, Amsterdam, Frankfurt. This is something what, what we are working on. What is your view on, I think uh, Leah was also addressing some of, some of these issues that uh, how communities relate to the airport phenomenon <laughs> and uh, are they just suffering or do they, do they, can they benefit from it? And, and I think that uh, this, this um, comment uh, from Rene is also strengthens my feeling and I think it's one of uh, the targets of, of AirLED is to get a much clearer understanding of what is the economic base around an airport in the region which helps and triggers development in a sustainable way. Because I think that now what we see is that there are uh, fragile uh, individual interests. Of course, the airports need extra revenues because of, of also the, that uh, they want to avoid the fluctuations uh, of, of the airliner markets and, and hold these consolidation procedures. So if, if, you know, if, if one carrier moves away, that's a major problem for, for, uh, for an airport. Um, I'm, I'm looking a little bit from, from your perspective, from RIC, that uh, um, what, what are the, the, the ideas or throughout your work, working with many municipalities, uh, can you work out some kind of a system? You mentioned this training element, which, which I found very interesting. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about that? That how, how can you convince, is it, uh, is it uh, multilateral governments working together? Uh, or, or it's, it's basically some non-profit uh, agencies who try to bridge this kind of uh, skill gap so that the, the airport can train and work with those people in the neighborhood. Um, and also, 
it's, it's of a general interest and it's open to all of you. When, when you are thinking about who are the target markets uh, you are serving with and how to sell the location, because some way airports are also bound to the location. And if there is no skilled employment uh, available, employees available, if there is no cargo volume available, then, then you can't work. So somehow you have to have a mix of, of, of course, environmental issues, but also there, there should be enough economic activity. And I think this is a this is a, um, a multiple job because all these things relate to each other. Um, what, what is maybe maybe it's a bit complex, but I was setting up. But but I'm interested in in this element of how the local community can react and and be part of this story. Okay. Thank you. Well, well, I will try to answer this question by answering to your first question to the other people, if you don't mind, because sure. I think they are really interconnected. Creating an airport city or an aeropolis or whatever you call it is one of the clear area where the regions, the cities, the local authorities and the airports have the same interest. Why? Because I mentioned that smaller airports have difficulties to break even. And if you look at the profitable airports and how they make their profits, they make their profit from non-airport activities, or mostly, I'm saying it simply. So in order to be a profitable business, the airports, whatever their size is, need to have uh, an airport city nearby. What do local authorities need is to have an economic development, to have jobs. Then there is a risk. Uh, some studies have demonstrated with high-speed train that when you move a train station from somewhere to put it somewhere else, you're not creating new economic profit, new economic wealth in the new place, you're just moving it. If you, if you are just building a new train station. So if, I don't know, in Ljubljana, you are creating a very beautiful conference center at the airport, you, and you are just changing the conference that are currently taking place in the city center of Ljubljana. It's very good for the airport, but then for the region, it's just moving something from one place to the other, which is not very really useful. So there, there needs to be a cooperation between the region to have new conferences coming to increase uh, the attractivity of the area as a conference center, etc. We are not just playing musical chairs with the same 20 chairs. We want to add chairs to have a beautiful concert at the end of the day. So then you would create acceptance and you would involve the local communities by creating a project. And that's what I like in what you said on tailor-made projects. I, I'm traveling a lot in my job, which is I'm very happy about. Uh, but I see many, many airports or regions saying, I'm going to be the new low-cost hub, or I'm going to be the new biomedical hub, <laughs> and with biomedical industry in Europe. Um, my airport is middle way to Asia, so I can become a hub with Asia. Yeah, maybe, but you can't all be the one hub to Asia. And when you're mentioning a tailor-made strategy, I think it's very important that the airport and the region define together a strategy that is really in line with the route, the identity, the capacities of the region. I was in a region where they were explaining to me, and I thought that was very interesting, that they have a very huge TV industry, and it was in Wales, they are having most of the TV series, Doctor Who, etc., etc., that are shot there. So it requires a lot of people working in the cinema and TV industry to go to Wales. Well, why not making a cluster on the subject? That's specific, but then you are not competing with your next door neighbor on exactly the same market, because there is a risk of, when you're competing on exactly the same market, there is a risk of eating each other rather than growing together. So that's one thing. Then to go to the training issue, that's why it's linked. The training issue must, um, it's, when it's airport specific jobs, it's airport specific job, and there needs to be a concertation between the cities in charge of vocational training and the airport to define what are the actual needs. And as mentioned, in an ideal world, the city can answer to the need and train the people rather rapidly. That's in an ideal world. Uh, but you have also all the jobs linked 
to the cluster, to the specific economic activities nearby. And there, once again, it's not a matter of moving the jobs from one place to the other, it's a matter of creating added value something really new. And that's why it's not easy. If I had a magic recipe, I would be living somewhere in the Carib Islands. And I would hire you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you would hire me, it could be very good also. So there is no magic recipe, and you were asking on the training if there is a, a pattern, a standard pattern. The standard pattern is that there is no pattern. The successful training centers that I've seen are the ones that are built on the specific, because administratively, all countries and all cities are different. So if the, the successful centers that I've seen are built on the specificity of the country. Um, in Sweden, the one I mentioned, it's a, a joint undertaking of the airport and of two municipalities. In Wallonia, the one I've seen, it's purely, it's uh, funded by what they call the Marshall Fund for Development of Wallonia, and it's being created by a specific uh, almost state fund, federal fund. So there is no magic recipe in creating those. You are the ones who are the best placed to know how your city, how your region work. So no, and you are also the best placed to know what are your specificities to make it successful. Long answer, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mentioned uh, multimodal logistics center. This is uh, the idea or the project is still it's in infancy, but uh, behind or part of it is also moving the cargo train station from Ljubljana to the airport. Okay, clearly the airport gets something from this. What gets Ljubljana as a city? Because okay, there it, it's uh, uh, let's say uh, there. Are, different interest behind. Ne? Some say extremely valuable land is now covered by the train cargo train station in Ljubljana, so they are in favor. Some they are not because they are losing, okay, jobs around that. So it's really, a com it's a conflicting project. Now it's not that easy to say this is just straight. It's not. And just a reference what you, what you said at the beginning about this um, conference and Congress business. Um, yes, we as, as Budapest Airport, we've also identified um, conferences and congresses as a potential let's say, business opportunity also for the airport. Um, and in, in terms of hard facts or in terms of facilities, we've investigated if it makes sense to build a huge conference congress center at the airport. Um, so we have investigated this with all the big hotel operators, with the big international uh, conference organizers. Uh, we have checked what is already here in Budapest in town, in the city, what is available, uh, so how many capacity. And it turned out it, it doesn't make sense to build something at the airport because um, on one hand you have sufficient capacity already in town, you have suffi sufficient five-star, four-star, five-star bedroom facilities available in town with a nice city, with a nice nightlife, all these things. So therefore having a conference, one or two days conference at the airport, doesn't make sense because the conference organizer will say, mm, why should we have held a conference here in the middle of nowhere? Mm -hmm. uh, because the people after the concert, they, they would like to entertain, they, they would like to enjoy the city. So therefore we decided not to continue with such a project, um, but we decided to join the um, Hungarian tourism organization. And together, we, so we teamed up, together we advertised Budapest as a location for conferences and congresses. Mm -hmm. So we gain because it means additional passengers, additional revenues for us, arriving, departing passengers, uh, aeronautical revenues, but also non-aviation, non-aeronautical revenues. And in the city, our um, partners, so hotels, for example, they're also quite happy. The results in 2012 were quite, quite fine. So um, guest nights in the four-star, five-star business are growing, um, even without a Malif, it's working. Yeah, this is really good. I mean, because uh, yes. regarding business center, né, which we have in our, uh, sorry, uh, I made an interview with the country managers of a big multinationals represented in Slovenia, a dozen of them. All said no. Their obvious target to move to the airport. They said no, we prefer being in the center. So. 
there are these, also these are cultural issues as well, that how you relate to your city and what are the cities. Now, in the case of Modlin, I think it's, it's also an, uh, an interesting thing that you have an existing system of airports and now you are extending. What triggered the expansion and uh, what, how do you uh, manage this process uh, in, in the planning sense? That we, we saw all these pictures and I, I think it's a very interesting procedure that you are in, the, in this starting phase. Okay, to explain in this situation, I will say uh, some about airport city, yes? The airport city for us is the added value, generally. It's the added value for the airport. And uh, is it marketing or economic engine? In, on the, on, in the beginning for us, it's the marketing. Why? This is why in, uh, once, uh, in the project we have the tool one-stop shop, because we should uh, act as one team, so the airport and municipality around the airport, because the airport have uh, some uh, restriction from uh, surrounding municipality, from uh, in inhabitants, the protection area, etc., etc., and the uh, municipality have uh, uh, protected zone from, for example, from runaway uh, uh, area around the uh, runaway, and etc. So we thought about this, okay, first we start to talk one each other uh, and find uh, uh, who, which kind of benefit will uh, from this airport have, yes, so it's the first. And like Thomas said, we thought about the larger scale, about the uh, west part of the, our region, because we have the um, big refinery in Płock, so uh, we have around this refinery, we have a uh, technological park, mm -hmm. which is uh, close connected, which is uh, based on some material from the refinery. So we, uh, we uh, started many years ago and it's working. Then uh, we uh, discussed that, okay, uh, this refinery produced uh, many, uh, for example, fuel for, fuel for, the, uh, mm -hmm. for the plane. So uh, it goes not straight away, but around the different, because we don't have the uh, straight connection to the airport. Then uh, we discuss, okay, around the airport, Modlin airport, we should uh, find the places, because uh, all municipality prepared in their study the places around the airport that, okay, we have the area for um, uh, infra, uh, for um, cargo, etc., etc., and uh, on each municipality, we have three municipalities around the airport, are the same function of the territory. So it's wrong because it's competition, not uh, cooperation. So the first for us is to meet each other, uh, talk, and find the, um, our um, um, brand together, to have our brand together. So not uh, one municipality second, but brand for municipality and the airport together. Then we, uh, we start to think about, okay, there is the functional area in, around the airport. The closer is the, for example, services uh, where the people from, uh, from the municipality can work, and this is the first. But we have also the larger area of influence, for example, the ports, so we can create some uh, technological park which will be uh, the partner from the uh, park in ports, so we have the, some connection and added value. And also, in the terms of passenger in the airport, we have the Chopin airport in the middle of the city, which, uh, on, uh, which in the environment uh, issue, they have some level of uh, operation on the runway. So, if they reach this, uh, this capacity, they can't develop because in the middle, they are in the middle of the city. So, we start to uh, build the uh, Modlin airport to uh, be complementary uh, for the um, Chopin airport. So to, to uh, ra uh, give opportunity to uh, move some uh, cheaper flight, which is uh, not um, related uh, to the um, uh, services which are in the center of the city. But for example, for many people, it's important to reach the airport and fly not to spend many years for, in traffic, for example, because when you want to do, go through the uh, Chopin airport, you have to uh, go to the city and uh, spend, I don't know, one and a half, uh, two hours in the traffic. But in the modeling, you have straight connection uh, in the uh, uh, small distance from the Warsaw, so uh, we have to be accessible. So the next uh, uh, idea was, of course, we have to reorganize the uh, communication, the accessibility. So, 
Of course, the public transport is important, very important. So the public transport and railway station, not only for passengers, but for cargo also. So the ports, the, the fuel from refinery, etc., etc., and also the roads to to make uh, to be more accessible for each kind of transport. So this is our uh, main objectives to, uh, and this is why. Uh, we, uh, we have in this project, as a partner, we have uh, the one-stop shop, which we should implement it in Mazovia region. We are in a different situation like uh, Ljubljana, where they also have one-stop shop, but in the different stage, I think. So for us, it will be the different uh, objectives and for them also. What, what I find uh, striking is that uh, this, this cooperation or competition issue, because uh, it also handles that there are some planning um, uh, uh, responsibilities sitting with the local governments and uh, uh, in the general system if the local governments uh, feel that it is their interest to attract all the activities to their own land then there could be some competition so also there might be some private landowners who are thinking that if the airport starts to become a real estate developer then their projects uh, will fail because the airport obviously has an advantage of uh, having the direct access of the infrastructure. And of course, all these powers or all these players try to represent their interests. And then there is a third stakeholder, I think the state, which defines projects and, and in the transport networks, what are the priorities. So if the airport lacks the good accessibility and there is no high priority consensus that this is good for the general economy, therefore we should prioritize. Um, how do you view, and, and I'm opening it up for all of you, uh, that um, how can we create this kind of consensus that people start to think, or municipalities, different actors start to think, not in just a narrow self-interest, but try to think in the big picture. What triggers this? If I may respond to this, uh, it's, it's very hard. It's a hard work, uh, and one shouldn't uh, think it can happen overnight. That's number one. Um, and um, I think um, we have some positive and negative uh, examples in this field, uh, also at Budapest Airport. Um, um, when I joined the company about five years ago, and um, uh, I must say, um, that uh, ever since there has not been um, a conference like this uh, uh, where we discussed uh, issues about uh, uh, airport uh, and region uh, uh, together how to develop. Um, um, there have been um, um, many meetings, many uh, discussions, but very little where all the uh, representatives um, have been uh, there. So uh, uh, in this respect, this is uh, already a very good um, uh, thing that uh, this project has started. And what I hope that um, we have um, uh, also had some contribution to this is um, uh, underlined by the fact that the, uh, the airport company has um, um, uh, also realized the importance of such cooperation. And um, uh, we had a number of initiatives um, um, uh, already now, six years ago, we established um, a consultative uh, committee um, uh, where the, um, the airport company uh, invited um, the, the, the neighboring uh, municipalities and other uh, professional stakeholders, uh, uh, ministries, authorities uh, uh, on, uh, to sit together um, um, every once in a while and discuss um, uh, issues um, uh, uh, related to the airport development. Interestingly, this committee has also for many years uh, have been considered only as a one-way uh, sort of communication channel. Um, the airport uh, company presented the, its ideas and the, the, the facts and uh, uh, parties attending uh, have been very nice listening, um, but uh, not so much uh, in interacting. But over time, this has also become a, a little bit more interactive. And, uh, and one very good example is that um, um, we have uh, set up a joint uh, working group with um, uh, um, uh, the, the participants to discuss how to uh, develop the, 
the, the, the, the transport network around the, the, the airport and uh, we've come up with uh, uh, joint proposals um, um, and actually prioritized uh, the, the, the main issues, the, the main uh, possible projects. Obviously in Budapest, um, um, this is um, the number one priority is, is the, um, the, the express road, the um, uh, leading to the, uh, to the airport and, um, and, um, and now we are hand in hand uh, talking to uh, the, 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 the relevant um, uh, ministerial and, um, and, and municipal um, bodies to, 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 to put this forward. But this, even in, on this very topic, uh, the, the first uh, sort of cooperatory meeting uh, happened two years ago, and we are still not there to actually implementing um, or to having this, uh, this implemented in, in, in full scale. So it, it takes time, but um, it's, it's worth it, and, um, and I think uh, the key is um, indeed uh, to realize that it's, uh, it's not always um, uh, competition, uh, so the, the different parties, of course, have different interests, but uh, one should also look for the, the common interest uh, and not just see the, the, the different differences in opinions. Sorry. You asked uh, what can prevent the different parties of, uh, from competing and what can encourage them to cooperate. My experience, what I'm observing throughout Europe, is that it's a fear of failure that can lead people to cooperate. I have seen, well, I'm French, so no offense meant, I will take the French example. Charles de Gaulle Airport, three different counties, 80 municipalities, one region, seven development agency, maybe 20 something intercommunalities uh, agencies. That's what I call a complicated governance. Uh, we live in democracy, so we are not in a situation where all the powers are in one hand and where things can be done like that. That's a matter of fact, we have to live with that and I'm very happy to live with that issue. Uh, but, um, as you say, cooperation takes time. And what I've seen in Paris is that there's a very interesting initiative that was started a few years ago, which is called Upstart Paris. It is sort of an additional organization where you have put, they have put all the major stakeholders, which I mentioned, Aeroport de Paris, so Paris Airport companies, the counties, etc., for a branding, for a territorial marketing strategy that they define together and that they are try, trying to sell worldwide together. So they are defining a common goal, a common objective, which is simply said, economic wealth, and they are trying to define their own identity behind that brand. There are similar examples maybe in Lyon, with only Lyon, and there are other examples throughout Europe. In Gothenburg, it's called Gothenburg, go to Gothenburg. So there are initiatives, they are creating an identity, a common identity, and they are doing that because somehow they realize that there was a risk of common failure. And that's why the cooperation with the airport and the region is necessary there again. You, it cannot work if not everybody is behind the project. I think this, this fear of common failure, because I think that uh, somehow this narrow-mindedness also comes through that it's a fear from my failure, and I'm not really interested about anybody else. So it's, it's also, but this, this mentality also uh, helps failures, that's obviously. Now I would like to open the floor uh, to your questions, because I'm sure that after the, the, the um, plenary session and also this little discussion, and also our participants, please feel free to, to add comments and uh, come up with questions from the audience. Everybody wants to have lunch. <laughs> That's my impression. Okay, well... I would have a question for the audience. That's good. <laughs> Sorry, Go it should not Go be ahead. that way around, but I take advantage. Uh, I have the mic. Um, where do you see your future without an airport? And where do you see your future with your airport? 
what do you want to be? What role do you want to play on the international scene? So there are 80 of you in the room, or probably more. You don't have to answer individually, but that's a question I have for you. Well, I, or take it home? <laughs> yes, maybe, maybe an idea. I mean, we, we will have plenty of time to, to, to think about this because the ILAT project, and I think that the, one of the opportunities of the ILAT project is that it's an open dialogue process. And, and I, I, I hear that I think there are, we are, we already have half open doors. Uh, it's probably we have to create more opportunities that these doors open wider. And uh, also one of the issues which, which came to my mind is that if, if uh, this, uh, this competition or, or this lack of cooperation is results from certain fears, I think if there is a sharing of information that might reduce this fear factor. And somehow, I, um, in, the, in the RDCB meeting we had, uh, I had a very short uh, uh, presentation, but I started, uh, my first slide was barbed wire. Because I think for many people still, the average people, uh, the airport is a closed off uh, place and uh, they don't understand how it works. Uh, it, it, they, they, they feel that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a high political issue or it's, uh, it's something mystical. And uh, on the other hand, it's, it is also part of an economic player. It has different roles, different ambitions, different structures maybe, and uh, there are also several levels of decisions that have to be made to, to make this cooperation. And sometimes these levels of decisions are conflicting with each other. And I think that is the way how to, by sharing information, by thinking collaboratively together, we might help uh, uh, these conflicts somehow find a compromise because I think that's the, that's the key issue. One thing came to my mind, you were mentioning this, this very complex decision-making systems. Are Europe, are we sitting here in Europe with our very complex uh, democratic ways of thinking, will fall behind uh, of the Middle East or China where maybe there is an emperor who will say, I want this and it will happen? Mm -hmm. Do you have a view on this? Because I, I think this is, this is also so. We have to develop some kind of a, a culture which, which crea creates this, this freedom and also everybody wants to be happy in, in their roles. So there, there should be win-win uh, uh, situations. But on the other hand, there are other types of regimes in this world and they are now competing for the global power. Uh, in, in, this, in this field of, of developing airports, are we, are we losing out? because of, of maybe too complicated uh, systems or, or too much conflict and we don't have good ways to, to channel uh, the decisions? No, we are not losing. That's good. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's say, um, especially in the aviation market, you can see um, the big money coming from the, let's say, from the Arabic countries or from the Emirates um, uh, cause a problem for Europe. So they have established <laughs> Um, new airlines, so Emirates, Etihad, um, Qatar, Qatar Airways, um, and these airlines are established with a huge, um, let's say, um, pocket from, from somebody who is not really interested in having a business case behind mm -hmm. and having a profitable airline behind. And they are really competing with the European carriers. So therefore, in this respect, so in the aviation market, you can already see there's a certain moving of, of business activities from Europe to, let's say, to the east. It can happen, as you said, it can happen with the, let's say, with other industries as well, because maybe somebody will say, I would like to have this kind of industry in my country, and I'm happy to spend some money for this, and I'm, I don't care if the business behind is profitable, but I would like to see uh, higher population, I would like to see workplaces, I would, like to, I would like to see a very nice business environment coming out from this. Um, so therefore it's always a question, what comes first, chicken or egg? So if you're willing to spend a huge amount of money after a certain period, after five years, 10 years, 20 years, you, get, you gain the, let's say, the, the benefit from out of this. So as you said, and also Gabo said, it's, it's quite hard, quite hard, it's, it, it requires long-standing works and always, let's say, working together. And, and for this case here in Budapest, I'm, we're quite happy to, to know there is this kind of platform and also the conference today shows, yes, we, we, we can continue, there's a step ahead. And um, so therefore, we're quite confident in Budapest it will, it will continue, but it requires um, very special attention and, and, uh, and continuously efforts. 
Call me, sorry. Call, yeah, J just one thing. Call me an idealist, but uh, yes, it might be more difficult for us, the situation, because it's always easier to have big pockets of money, etc. But what we gain with this cooperation and dialogue is a sort of a cluster for ideas for future. And we can be richer for idea of our intelligence than rather one emperor deciding on his own somewhere, wherever. A következő lenne a kérdés, most magyarul mondom, és akkor majd fordítják. Tehát, hogy a Leád Bodoszján elmondta ugye az előadásában, hogy a gazdasági és a környezetvédelmi dolgokat valahogy úgy kell egymással arányba állítani, hogy ebből mindkét terület jól jöjjön ki. Én azt szeretném kérdezni tőle, miután ő Franciaországba jött, hogy hogyan néz ki mondjuk ez Párizsban, most gondolok én a, a Roissy, vagy pedig a Charles de Gaulle Airport környékére, hogy ez hogyan, hogyan felel meg a valóságban. Köszönöm. How does it work in Paris? With sweat and tears, with difficulties. <laughs> That's the only thing I can say. I'm not going to hide the truth. Uh, it's improving. It's improving a lot. Uh, a few years ago, I attended some meetings where people were shouting, slamming doors, uh, calling each other names, liars, etc., etc. And I was, there's a long way to go. It's improving, notably because in the airport business in general, there are still some old timers, old school people, but many people have stopped saying that environment does not exist, that's the E word, you know, the one which is just before the F word in the alphabet. So basically, and I think that's a proof today, that has stopped as an attitude. So it's improving, but it takes a lot of time. And the situation is still far from ideal, but it's improving. May I can add the example of Amsterdam Airport? Um, so I think Amsterdam Airport was also quite clever. On one hand, Amsterdam has, has the advantage. It's a, it's a transfer airport, transfer hub. Um, I don't know the numbers right now, but maybe we have minimum 40 million passengers. So number three, number four in, in Europe. Um, this is already a kind of guarantee for, for business activities and a guarantee for establishing an airport city. But in Amsterdam, they have realized, all, all the stakehold stakeholders surrounding the airport, they have realized they need to work together. So therefore, we have created a company. So we have really established a company with shareholders um, and the surrounding sta stakeholders of the airport were shareholders, including the airport. And they have started to promote the region of Amsterdam Airport and in my view, they did this quite successful. And what you can see today at Amsterdam, Amsterdam Airport, so really in the, in the center of the airport, but, but also surrounding the airport, it's working quite well. So they have really uh, defined what are the, let's say, values of, of the area, where do we need to establish what kind of cluster, uh, how do we promote this, what's about the ownership of, of land, um, what are the, let's say, interests, uh, do we have conflicts, so, and they have aligned all these things, and then they have started to, pr to promote. And again, in my view, and may you can, you can share this, um, quite successful. There was a problem with my microphone. I just heard the question about Paris, but I fully concur with what's being said on Amsterdam. They are front runners on many aspects. I think uh, the ELET project will provide us with similar experiments and experiences. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this launching conference. I thank you, my panelists, for joining me uh, today and uh, for all of you to join us in this conference. Uh, I would highlight that uh, we, we have the airled.eu website where you will have uh, all the information available. And please follow this uh, information, this lead, and uh, we will have a, a newsletter uh, published on all these activities and most of them will be open for the public. So we would like to engage you in this dialogue, continue to work uh, with the airport regions, with the airport, with the municipalities, with the uh, economic actors, uh, private businesses, uh, 
to, to think creatively together. And uh, the good news is that it's not just in Budapest, but it's also in Poland, also in Slovenia, also in Emilia and Romania in Italy. And we also try to cross-fertilize our ideas and try to find ways to, to get engaged and somehow uh, build a positive future for our economies, our, our citizens, and also our airports. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, you are kindly invited to join us for a lunch uh, after the conference, and uh, hope to see you uh, again in one of our events uh, following up this conference. <laughs>